I went to Richmond. That was the final stop. I want to talk about that. We and talk welcome about that. back. <laughs> Already speaking and laughing with my good friend and, of course, well-known photographer, Dwayne Kramer. Dwayne, welcome. Thank you, David. We were just, you were just saying that you were on a tour of the East Coast photographing uh, African-American men, and I think you were in my hometown. I was. Um, I actually was with a couple of associates uh, that I work with at Better World um, Advertising, and we took the HIV Stops With Me campaign from uh, Baltimore to Richmond, Virginia. And uh, HIV Stops With Me is a, a HIV for Positives prevention campaign specifically targeting people in cities with real people mm -hmm. that are HIV positive um, and sharing their stories and, and really reaching out to those in their community to make a difference. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's heartwarming to me to hear that that sort of campaign is actually touching Richmond, my hometown. Yeah. Because, I mean, Richmond, for many years known as just, you know, the capital of the Confederacy, right. is now the place that along that Monument Avenue with all those mm -hmm. uh, people from the 1860s is a statue of Arthur Ashe. Right. Not right. only the first African-American to have his statue in Washington, D.C. on that monument, but the first person really... Uh, well-known who died of AIDS, HIV. Yeah. Uh, Richmond, Virginia is a hard town to do a campaign about HIV awareness for black people. Yeah, Americans. you know, it's, it's, it's really uh, amazing because, you know, these people living with HIV, and they're, they're folks from 22 years old, Jason, to a uh, gentleman in his 40s that are living with HIV. Their faces are out there in the community. They are letting people know that, you know, HIV stops with me. It stops with them. And by really sharing those stories and being reflective of the community, uh, they're able to really make a difference. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I feel really fortunate that I'm able to work with these people, especially in the South, because this is really the first time that we've taken this campaign into the Deep South. And like you said, the former uh, capital, capital of the, of the Confederacy. Confederacy. <laughs> this, this is not an easy thing to talk about no, there. No, no, it's not. What was your reaction? Or what was the reaction to you in the campaign when you were there? Well, what, what I realized is that these people really want to make a difference. And um, the people in the community see these ads, they see themselves reflected, and it um, you know, causes them to really think about their part in helping to stop the spread of HIV um, you know, by themselves and uh, in, in their communities. Mm -hmm. So it's really great. You've been working in the trenches of AIDS, HIV education and prevention for a long time, certainly as long as I've known you, and mm -hmm. that's been 22, yeah. 23 Absolutely. years. Why is this a personal and important message and campaign for you? Yeah, well I, I think it's most important because uh, my father died of HIV, well AIDS related complications 25 years ago in Washington DC um, and that was kind of the wake-up call for me that this was something that was affecting my family and other people like me. Um, also I think you know that I've been living with HIV for 16 years and um, it's really through um, being open and honest and authentic and really talking about HIV and its impact on all of us that, that um, you know, I can make a difference. And so I'm really proud that through my art and through my work with the business community that I'm able to really make a difference. Mm -hmm. What's harder as a member of a community of color, being gay or being HIV positive? What do they want to talk about less? When you're there with your family or you go into a church or you go into a community group in say Baltimore or Washington mm -hmm. or Richmond and say, hi, I'm a black man and I'm gay and I'm mm -hmm. HIV positive. I mean, all right. They start looking at their watch and... Well, you know, uh, I actually um, believe that that's more of a uh, misconception mm -hmm. than the reality. Um, HIV and AIDS is, has affected millions and millions of black people across the planet. And more than uh, the white population. Right, right. Well, probably 50% mm -hmm. of all the new HIV infections are those of people of color. And um, within the African American population, nearly 50% of uh, those living with HIV and new infections are men who have sex with men. So that includes gay, bi, mm -hmm. and or other people that consider themselves maybe straight but have sex with men. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that first I'm a black man and you know whether you know I say that or not people see that. So um, people don't necessarily know that you're gay but when you talk about living with HIV and AIDS it kind of brings things home for people. And the churches have been very responsive, more responsive than people uh, would give them credit for. There's lots of you know, AIDS ministries across the country in the South. There are groups like the Bomb of Gilead out of New York City that do work across the country you know, through their ministries and reaching out to the black community. So I think the time is now for us to take care of us. Does it annoy you when you see a new generation of, of people treat AIDS as, oh gosh, it's something like having a toothache, when you and I have both Mm -hmm. lived through the years of seeing 
you know, the gay press and newspapers mm -hmm. literally fill two and three pages right. of obituaries. And now I hear, I see, I interview people mm -hmm. uh, who seem to think AIDS is yesterday's disease. How does that make you feel? Well, and do you think that's true? Um, that there's uh, that perception. I think that there is that perception because there's so many people uh, that feel that, oh, well, if they become HIV positive, they can just take one pill and that's okay. But it's really not okay. And there are so many other complications and, and issues surrounding that, um, that that people don't often consider. Um, it's, it's amazing that in, in certain places, in, in fact, in San Francisco, people will come here, young people, runaways will come. They will come here as HIV negative people, they will try to become infected so that they have access to services, so that they can get housing, that they can get medications, they can, Have you, you actually know. heard of these stories? Oh, I've heard absolutely. of this as like some sort of urban myth. No, it's, 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 it's a reality. Um, but what's happening now, because of ADAP and that there are so many waiting lists in different states and what have you, um, that if these young people do get services and for whatever reasons they <coughs> jump off of the ADAP program, they may not be able to get back on. Mm -hmm. So there are all kinds of other and complications. Explain that program to those who are not sure what it is. Um, well, the ADAP program is one that um, offers basically drug assistance. It's, it's a, a drug assistance program that will allow people that are living with HIV or AIDS to get medications and what have you at no cost. It's uh, federally funded, you know, out of, out of DC, obviously. Um, and uh, in many states, there are waiting lists for people to get on you know, this program. Mm -hmm. Over the years, and either because of or in spite of uh, the AIDS pandemic, how has your work changed? I mean, I, I, there was a time when, boy, if there was a beautiful uh, man with his shirt off and you saw that picture somewhere, it's like, that's a Dwayne Kramer picture. <laughs> Not a bad thing to be known for, but it, everyone knew your work and still does. Mm -hmm. How has that changed or evolved? Or are you the same Dwayne Kramer now that you were in 1989? Um, Artistically. I would say that artistically, my work is much more diverse. Um, you know, I try to do everything that I can, you know, with the skills that I've been given and, and gift of, of my eye to capture people in a very real way. I, I believe that everyone's beautiful, so whether you're ripped with muscles or, you know, you're scarred and 300 pounds, I think you're beautiful. I think that it's important to capture images of those people and to put them out to the world so that people can really see. Mm -hmm you know, um, a reality of what we all look like. Do you think for, and correct me if I'm wrong, sure. if you think this is not correct, but you were one of the first photographers that really eroticized the African-American black gay male. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a while there, I mean, I remember when I was writing for the gay press, it was like, it seemed like every gay man must be white and blonde. Mm -hmm. And you changed that in a big way. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's still there? Um, yes, and, and I think that it's important for me as a person of color to continue to capture images of uh, a diverse group of people mm -hmm. so that when people are looking at magazine covers and they're looking at different spreads and, and ad campaigns, that they see themselves reflected, that they see that um, while they may not be blonde and blue-eyed, mm -hmm. that they are beautiful in every sense the way that they are. Right. Now, she's certainly not 300 pounds and scarred, but your mom is a classic <laughs> beauty. I mean, it's just true. They're good genes in this household. <laughs> Talk to me about the film that you and your mother appear yeah. in. Well, there's um, a short film called Tell Me, uh, directed by Veronica Delise, and um, it is part of a series called Still Here, and it's a um, compilation of five-minute shorts uh, by different directors on people living in the Bay Area with HIV and AIDS. Um, the film focusing on my mother uh, is basically a sort of reenactment of when I told her that I was HIV positive. And I waited about a year and a half to tell her because I was so fearful that she would think that I was going to die as her ex-husband, my yes. father, Dr. Joe J. Kramer, had died of AIDS-related complications you know, so many years ago. So um, when I told her that, um, back in 1998, I believe, she um, told me the next day that she was very upset with me. And I said, why are you upset with me? And she said, because I wish you would have told me so that I could have been there for you. This doesn't change anything. I love you. We all love you. Mm -hmm. And I know that you love me. So it's important to tell me so that I can be there for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the film gets at this conversation 
in a very artistic and, and creative way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, it's going to make a very big impact when it's released because, again, it's going to show <coughs> a mother who loves her son who lost an ex-husband to AIDS and is very comfortable talking about it and that it's not about HIV and AIDS. It's about the connections we have with people and about loving, you know, um, one another mm -hmm. and our family. Did you ever think you'd become a photo activist? Um, and do you think that's a apt description I, of what you do I now? I think that it is. I like to refer to it as artivism because through both the artwork that I capture, create, and you know, share with the world, it is making a statement and um, really something that, that is, is, is very much about activism. Mm -hmm. I've heard you say this before that you thought, that you think everyone is beautiful. Mm -hmm. In our last few moments, tell me someone who you photographed that really just, you went, wow, I wasn't prepared for what the lens showed me. Something that really made you sit back and mm -hmm. go, hmm. You know, that's really a hard question to answer because <clears throat> Like I said, I do believe everyone's beautiful, but it's that inner beauty that kind of comes out through the person that is kind of most um, important to me mm -hmm. and important to try to capture, you know, through the lens. So, um, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but my mother is m the favorite, my favorite, you know, model to uh -huh. photograph or, or person. Because every time she probably shows you something new. Yes, yes. We've been speaking with Dwayne Kramer. We look forward to the film featuring his mother and himself. And I hope you look forward to seeing us again next week. I'm David Perry. You've been watching 10%. Good night.